Sometimes you do a t-test and you get a negative t-value. What do you do with that? How do you report it? Let's answer how you should interpret a negative t-value or a negative effect size. Let's think about why you would get a negative t-value. In IBM SPSS statistics, I have two groups. And I'm going to do an independent samples t-test. The groups are coded as 1 and 2. And I have a scale level dependent variable. I put the dependent variable in the variables box and the factor in the independent box. But before I run the test, I must define the groups. I will define them as group 1 and group 2. Let's be sure to get the effect size. And then I run the t-test. In the viewer, I can see that the t-value for this test is negative. But let's run that same test, this time with a twist. When I define the groups, I am going to switch the coding. I am going to use group 2 first, and then group 1, and OK. When we compare the output, we can see that the means, standard deviations, and the absolute values of the comparisons are exactly the same, except for the negative sign. The only reason one t-value was negative and the other was positive was the order that I entered the groups. If the first group has a lower mean, the t-test will be negative. If the second group has the lower mean, the t-test will be positive. Okay, let's try the same thing using a paired samples t-test. This time, I enter DV1 followed by DV2. Rather than just run this test twice, I'm going to simply create a second pair. DV2 goes in first, and then DV1. Let's be sure to get our Cohen's D effect size. Click OK. Let's study that output for a moment you will discover the same thing as we did for the independent samples t-test. All of the findings are the same in their absolute values. The only thing that is different is the presence or absence of the negative sign. And what made the difference was which group was entered first. A negative t-value for either an independent samples t-test or a repeated measures t-test simply indicates which group mean was greater. The same understanding holds true for effect size as well. Negative t-values have a negative effect size. So then, how do you report the negative effect size or t-value? The answer is that for statistical findings, it is safe for you to ignore the negative sign when you report the findings for a t-test or for a Cohen's d effect size. What matters is, one, whether or not the test is significant, and b, the size of the effect. And neither of these is affected by the order of entry. That's what I do. When I'm reporting t-test results in APA style, I ignore the sign. I report the means and standard deviations for each group, and the t-value as a positive value even if the SPSS results were negative. I also report Cohen's d as a positive value, regardless of whether it was negative or positive in the findings. It would not be wrong to report the negative sign, just unnecessary. The only exception to this would be for homework assignments in your statistics class you should ask your professor's preference for you to report the negative sign or to ignore it. And if any questions arise on how to approach negative findings, maybe you could recommend this video. I wish you the best in your research, and I will see you in statistics class.